Let's bring on former NFL general manager for the Saints and the Dolphins, the 2000 NFL Executive of the Year, and the co-host of the Football GM Pod with The Athletic, Randy Mueller, joins the wheelhouse right now. Randy, it's Jake, Cody, and BK. Thanks so much for a couple minutes today. My pleasure. Good to be with you guys. What's going on? Randy, we're doing well. So the Texans, of course, are now looking for another head coach, their third head coach in the last three years under Nick Casario. From a big-picture perspective, you obviously have been a GM with two different NFL franchises. What are your thoughts on the fact that Casario is about to hire a third coach in three years? Well, I don't think that's part of the GM manual. I can tell you that. <laughs> it's, uh, four coaches in four years is, is hard to build around, that's for sure. So the stability obviously has not been there. It, I don't know the processes they've gone through in the past, although it seems a little hard to follow. Um, I'm really not sure what Nick is looking for. Obviously, the production hasn't been there. The results haven't been there. But I'll say this, and I'm sure you guys have seen it closer than I and have talked about it at nauseum. I saw progress in, in what the Texans had done the last month. So um, I don't know where they're headed. It's, it's hard, though, because the criteria for uh, really how to evaluate seems to change from year to year. And I know the wins are what we're all looking for. But the progress has got to be there, and, and I guess Nick or whoever just hasn't seen the progress that he wants. I still think this team is a rebuild in the process, so it's hard to gain process, uh, hard to gain production when you just need to, I think, focus on the process. Randy, obviously every coach is different, but generally speaking, how important is it to a head coaching candidate to have good ownership and good front office stability? Because it feels like the Texans have neither of those right now. Well, I don't know that you have a chance unless you're all aligned, that's for sure. And it seems to me like that's that may be what has been missing, the alignment. I know a little bit about Nick. Obviously, he comes from, from a, a very productive franchise where he's been his whole life. Sometimes I think, and, and this isn't necessarily him, but other people that have come from New England who want to duplicate what they've done, I've always said, I wish they had a, a third set of eyes or somebody that's been somewhere else with them to gain alignment. To, to kind of, not referee, but kind of give some middle ground and have some fresh perspective. I think sometimes, especially it seems like people that come from the New England way, that's all they know, and they don't want to hear about anything else. But unless we're going to bring Bill Belichick and Tom Brady with us, I think there's got to be some compromise along the way. And that's really been a struggle for most of the spinoffs from the New England way, that's for sure. Randy, when you sit down as a general manager with ownership and you're talking to a head coach and you're interviewing head coaches, what do you try to accomplish in those interviews? What are you trying to find out? Are you asking about the current team? Are you asking about the future, plans, coaching staff? What, what all do you go through with a prospective head coach in an interview? Well, it's hard right now in this first step of the process to get out of them any evaluation of your own team because they haven't had time to look at it. In some cases, they're coaching their own team right now still. So it's an informal greeting um, and maybe an exchange of ideas, an exchange of philosophies. Sometimes that first interview is as much about personality fit as anything else. So you're looking for some traits that you might find in leadership that would carry over where that candidate wouldn't have to necessarily know your ins and outs of your team. You also want to share with him your vision going forward and see if it aligns with his. So I keep coming back to the word alignment, and that, that's really what it's all about. It's the right fit more than, hey, we're looking for an offensive guy or a defensive guy. They've got to be aligned in all areas, especially in how we're going to build this team. I think a lot of people think building these teams is just an evaluation. You pick players in a closet, and then you put them all together. It's really not. You've got to dig a little deeper than that and find a way to fit what's best for us going forward and you hope these candidates have the same kind of belief system that you can build together. And then maybe it's about also finding uh, the common ground if you don't agree on everything, because you're not going to agree. So there's a lot of things you can go through, but I think these first interviews are really personality-based and a general exchange of ideas. Randy, do you, do you usually know when somebody's just telling you what you want to hear? versus what they actually believe? Can you can you spot somebody that just really wants the job no matter what, and they'll just tell you what they want to hear? Well, I think if you've done much of this, yes. I think that is definitely a factor. Uh, the uh, BS meter is sometimes higher <laughs> with some than others. 
Um, I do think that you have to be authentic if you're a candidate for these jobs because I do think people see through it. And that may eliminate you if, if they don't think you're authentic. I've been through enough of these interviews to know that you can judge people. Um, you're not going to judge them the same as if they were under the gun pressure-wise or put the spotlight on them, but you can surely exchange enough ideas to where you can tell if somebody's given you coach speak or if they really believe it because they really have to know it and then be able to describe it to you. Sometimes these, these interviews are a test in, in teaching theory too, right? Because Let's face it, head coaches, any coaches are teachers. So you want to find out if they can teach you something in these interviews. If they, if they can't teach you, there's a good chance they're going to struggle to teach players. So there's, there's a lot of different angles you can evaluate during this process. Randy Mueller, former NFL GM, is with us here on the HRP guest line, co host of the Football GM Pod with The Athletic. Randy, we're going to put you in Nick Casario's shoes right now. If you were Nick Casario and you could hire any of these realistic candidates that are out there, is there a name that would stick out above everyone else? Well, I think everybody goes to the proven commodity if you can get it. Now, that hasn't you know, worked out for them, but at the same time, uh, I think it, it shouldn't prohibit them from going down that route again. You know, Obviously, the, the Sean Paytons of the world are going to come with a price, Jim Harbaugh with another price, but I do think regardless of your criteria, you need to hire the best coach you can. And if it means taking a little step back as a GM or with your own ego, I've found that that's the best thing to do. For example, when I was in Seattle, I was really the GM and had all of the authority that came with it. We went and hired Mike Holmgren from Green Bay. I was willing to acquiesce and step back because it wasn't about me. So sometimes you get the best coach if the people in the building aren't protective of their own agenda and fight them, if that makes any sense. Randy, asking you to kind of put yourself in Nick Casario's shoes again here. If it is Sean Payton, because to me it seems like he's the most proven of any candidate right now. You can make an argument for Jim Harbaugh, but Sean Payton, of course, has that Super Bowl. Uh, I mean, what would you be willing to give up? Like, the Texans have two first-round picks. Would you be willing to give up the 12th overall pick in exchange for getting the coach who you think is best for the job? Well, I think the Sean Payton thing is a little complicated because not only do you have to give up compensation – because he's going to have choices. You're also going to have to give up a giant compensation pay package. You're probably going to have to pay, you know, north of 12, 14 million a year. And then you're also going to have to be willing to restructure that front office. So there's a lot of egos that would be checked that are in the building right now. And I don't know if they're willing to do that. Like I said, we went through this in Seattle many moons ago when we hired Mike Holmgren. We all kind of had to check our ego and take a step back. But I personally wanted to get Mike Holmgren because I knew that he was that good of a coach. So We'll see how this goes. Um, the Sean Payton one is he's probably going to have some options, so I don't know that his choice would be to go there unless you give him all three of those opportunities or those things that are important to him. So, you know, I'm not sure. I think Jim Harbaugh probably will take, you know, uh, it will be a little more attainable. He, he has been in college, and I think he's made it known that he kind of wants out of there. The other assistants that seem to be in the pool – are going to acquiesce probably to whatever structure you want. But that doesn't mean they're going to be the best options either. They're the most risky in my mind. Randy, it's early in the evaluation process when it comes to draft picks. But as I read through countless profiles of Bryce Young, I find basically the same negative from everybody. He's not big enough. He's not big enough. He's not big enough. Is there a certain size that a guy has to be at quarterback for you to spend a really high draft pick on him? And do you have any early thoughts on Bryce Young and how perhaps his size may hold him back in the NFL? Well, I think it's the things that come with the uh, size deficiency. It's durability. It's vision within the pocket. It's some other things that maybe he doesn't have to have to operate that system in Alabama. It's, struggle. it's been a struggle for Tua. It's a struggle for any of these shorter guys Baker Mayfield, all of them struggle with vision in the pocket. There are very few Drew Breeses. There are very few guys like that, you know, who can make throws from the pocket at six foot or less. Very few Russell Wilson. So it's hard. Um, it is a big man's game, and eventually they will keep you in the pocket, and that's where you've got to beat them from. I just don't know that I could ever commit to a 5'10", 190-pound guy to do that because I know defensive coaches, and they are really good. Ask Kyler Murray. Eventually, they keep him in the pocket. It's not the same quarterback. So I guess everybody's criteria is different. That's why 
Baskin Robbins has 31 flavors, guys. You pick your favorite one. <laughs> it's just a smaller guy is not my favorite flavor. Randy Mueller with us here, former NFL GM. All right, Randy, well, who's your uh, favorite quarterback in this year's class? Do you have uh, a, a ranking, including Bryce Young, where you'd put him? I have not studied him yet. I think we're going to have plenty of time to do that, and I'm not copying out. I just think that we'll have the next month or two to do that. I have not myself, so I'm going to have to pass him, at least until I've seen him. I have seen Bryce, and I have watched tape on him because his name was most prevalent. I just struggle with a you know top ten pick on a quarterback of that stature. No, no offense to him. I know he's a great kid. I've heard him. I've seen him, and I've seen what people at Alabama say about him. That's just not what I think in a big man's game that you can survive with in a 17-game season year in and year out. Randy, are there any positions where it's easier to make an exception to what you would hope and desire from a physical standpoint? Is, is there a certain position or two where maybe a guy can get away with you know, being a couple inches shorter or not being as heavy as they need to be? Or I, I mean, obviously in an ideal world, you want uh, the biggest, strongest, fastest guy, but are there any positions where you're okay with maybe a tiny a uh, size disadvantage for a guy? Well, I think the game has become such a passing game and almost a seven-on-seven seven recess game that I think you can get away with a little bit of an undersized interior linebacker set at this point. You see a lot of guys 6'1", 225, 220, and to me that's undersized, but they're exhibiting great speed and athleticism and can play on third down. So that's the one area to me that the game has changed because it's such – a passing game, the rules favor passing the ball, that if you can have an, an inside linebacker that doesn't have to be a downhill thumper like we used to have in the olden day, but can go vertically you know, and run 4-5, I think that's one area you can take undersized and, and make them into really productive players in today's game. Randy, we'll get you out of here with this. Give us your Super Bowl pick if you got one now for the playoffs. Well, I, I've, I have struggled and gone up, up and down and all around <laughs> to, to say who at this time, is my pick because everything changes. I always used to say we're a couple weeks from a total mutiny with any team, so you never know. But I think the 49ers in the NFC are the team that's going to be hardest to prepare for and can beat you in more ways than than anybody else. Their offense is is run-oriented, it's pass-oriented, it's gadget-oriented with the you know, the running back they got from Carolina, McCaffrey. So they've got so many things, and they have the best defense, by the way, in the league. So I think it's the 49ers right now for me in the NFC. And I'll be honest, what has happened in Buffalo the last week with all the emotion and everything that's around DeMar Hamlin, and obviously we're happy and we hope the returns on his health continue to be positive, I think that could push Buffalo over the edge. I really do. I think they kind of needed a refocus and a rallying cry, and they have that. So if I was picking right now, I would say Buffalo and San Francisco. Randy, thanks so much for the time. We'll talk to you soon. Appreciate you coming on. All right, guys. Take care. Thank you.